Good morning, church. Today is Youth Sunday, so please stand up. I want you all to remember that you were all at youth at one point. You were all once youth, so let's see that energy this morning. Just the same way, all right? We're going to have a reading this morning. Okay, uh, I'm going to read Psalm 103, 1 through 5. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget all, not all his benefits, who forgives you who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life in the pit and crowds and with love and compassion, who satisfies and desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. May we be blessed and bless his name today. Amen. Amen. All right, put your hands together. I'll praise when I'm numbered, praise when surrounded, cause praise is the waters, my enemies drowning, as long as I'm breathing.
you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name.
you through the storm. Praise your name, God. Praise your name. you, God.
you again and again. Can we sing it, church? I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing. nothing to hold on to. God will work it out. Amen. Hold on to him. Believe and trust and know that he can do all things. And if you are within him, then you can do things all through him.
just rest in his spirit for a second. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you're worthy, Lord. That you work it out, Father God. That you work it out, Father. Thank you. Oh, Lord. We look to you today, Father God. Not because of what you can do, Father, but because of who you are because of who you are, Father God. We, we exalt your name this day, Father God. We glorify your name this day, Father God. Through every circumstance, Father, through every trial, Father God, we put our eyes to you, Father God. May it be so that we come, Father God, with hearts bearing your name, Father God, declaring your name, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. I pray right now, Father God, for every heavy heart in this place, Lord. For every heavy burden, Father God, that has come into this place, Lord. Lord, may they know your goodness, Father God. May they know your love. May they know your mighty working hand, Father God. Your healing hand, Father God. That you will work it out, Father God. I speak peace over every mind that has come in his, into this place, Father God. Troubled. That you give peace, Father God. But, Lord, most importantly, Father, I pray that we would have hearts that desire you, Father. Hearts that desire to seek your face, Lord, despite our emotions, despite our situation, Father God. You'll work it out, Father God. I pray that it would be more than a song today, Father. That it would be more than a song that we could trust in faith, Father God, that you will work it out, Father God. Holy Spirit, I ask right now that you would have your way, that even right now you would tug at hearts, Father God, that you would tug at the hearts right now, Father God, that they would bring up, Father God, that they would pull up, Father God, they would uproot, Father God, those things that they have been holding on to that has kept them from seeing your presence, that has kept them from seeking your presence, Lord. And that this word that I speak right now, you will work it out, Father God. Will saturate them, Father, in this time. Lord, Lord we, we, we pray even for the nations, Father God. All the turmoil that's going on in the world, Father God. Right now, Father God, I lift up Israel. I lift up Palestine. I lift up Iran, Father God. Lord, I say work it out father god i don't care we don't care about political sides lord we pair we care about your presence father god we care about you lord making the change father god you being magnified father god so lord work it out lord work it out father god that all knees all tongues shall confess your name father god would you work it out, Father God? Lord, for our school systems, Father God, would you work it out, Father God? Lord, for our communities, Lord, would you work it out, Father God? And Lord, I pray that you would use each and every one of us as servants of God, Lord, to seek and to move on your behalf, Father God, that we would be vessels, Father, that we would be vessels for your presence, Lord, that we would express, Father God, the power of God in our homes, in our church, in our communities, Father God, in nations, Lord. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Would you do what only you can do, Father God? We bless your name, Father God. Can we sing that just one more time? Can you declare it over yourself? Can you prophesy it over yourself? For whatever you're facing?
God will work it out. One thing I know, one thing I found, one thing I know, one thing I found, one thing I know, one thing I found is God will work it out. Today, Father God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father God. We submit everything to you this day, Father God. The rest of everything that's done today, Father God, work it out, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's good to see you. My name is Sean Smith. If you don't know me, I'm the youth director here at Faith AG. Assembly of God. Happy Youth Sunday. Happy Youth Sunday. Uh, I'm just so excited for what God has today. I'm so excited for what God has today. I'm so excited for us to be able to share what he's been doing. And um, yeah, his presence is in this place. Uh, I don't want to waste too much time. Um, you know, I wanted to be able to bless you guys with just the testimonies um, that we have from us coming back from youth convention. Um, it was an awesome time. Uh, thank all of you that supported us, that gave, that prayed. Um, God moved. He moved. So youth, if you could just come up now. Don't be shy. If you want to share, don't make me have to pull you. You know who we talk to. <laughs> just come up now. And um, yeah, I more than anything, I'm, I'm expecting God to glorify his name through, um, through our students. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Emmy, I'll take you first. <laughs> so this is Emmy. I'll let her share <laughs> just um, her experience and what, what um, God did for her in that, in that time at youth convention. Okay. Hi, guys. So this is my last youth convention as a student, and I was hoping for it to be the best one yet, and it really was. Um, they took our phones at first, and I was upset about it, <laughs> about not having it, but it felt good about not having it. Um, I think us not having it helped make new, help us to make new friends and grow closer as a youth group. I also enjoyed not having it during worship or the sermon because we got to press in without a distraction. I also enjoyed the second altar call where they had us kneel down and pray. Not only was it nice to witness, but be a part of. I was able to feel the joy that God has for me, something I've been afraid of feeling because I did not want to know how life would be, be without being in a constant sadness all day. I finally caved in after months of striving to be in sadness and afraid of happiness. I felt the joy of Jesus, and you can too if you allow him in. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Emmy. Again, God just taking and twisting and <laughs> removing um, the things that we, we decide to surrender to him that don't belong. Um, so what a praise. Andrea, if you'll come give her a hand. <laughs> I'll just give you a chance to share exactly what, what God okay, did. Okay, so this is my first youth convention, um, and here's my testament. So what happened to me at convention was um, the second night, which was Friday, the preacher's the preacher did an altar call. So we all went up to the front, and then she told us to go on our knees, and we were just all praying. Then I'm praying, and then I see a vision. What I saw was a staircase and a blinding light at the top of it. I see angels coming down, and right after them was Jesus. Then Jesus prays over me, and, come, and God comes down and prayed over me. He says, Andrea, you are a natural-born leader, and there will be a lot of changes in your life this year. And and while this is all happening, my back is on fire, and I feel like I'm burning on the ground. Also, I was so confused, and I was wondering, what in the world is happening? Then, of course, I realized what had happened after. And a verse that I like for the situation was Proverbs 3, 5, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. And so I asked the Lord this, and he told me what was happening. And that's my testimony. And that's my testimony. <laughs> Oh, man, <laughs> the working power of his Holy Spirit, guys. If you don't know, if you don't know he's real, <laughs> he loves you, he's ready to speak to you, he's ready to use you. 
what a powerful testimony. And there's no age limit. There's no age limit. Students, children, older seasoned saints, there's no age limit to what he wants to do, to how he wants to move. So praise God. What a powerful testimony. Gigi, would you come? We'll give it up for Gigi. Um, so before I went on the trip, I was dealing with grief, and I could just really feel that over my life. It's okay. Um, but on the second night of confession during the worship, uh, it's okay. I was praying, and I was just telling God that I didn't want to deal with it anymore. And um, after I made that prayer, I didn't feel like I had that presence on me. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. There's, um, God is a deliverer. God is a deliverer. Um, there's a little bit more I want to share with, um, with Gigi's testimony. Um, you know, that night that she's talking about, she went down and the students went down and a lot of the leaders went down to, you know, go find the students. And it's a swarm of just people. So you're in a sea of crowd. And to find <laughs> your students is a task. Um, and usually I would go down, but something told me this, this, this moment, no, nah, I'm not going to go down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. You know, I'm just going to pray from where I am. And church, as I, as I began to pray, the Lord just began to move and stir my heart. And in his spirit, he brought me to a place. And I don't know how weird this sounds to you guys. But again, I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the arena. But in the spirit, I'm somewhere else. And I'm in this room. And I see this, this heart tangled and nodded <laughs> and it's like I'm feeling what I'm seeing at the same time it's like I'm feeling this heart that I'm seeing and all of a sudden in that moment by his spirit again not <laughs> not none of anything that is done by by God is by us right I want to make that clear this but I want to testify to who he is and what he does. In that moment, in his spirit, he allowed me to touch this heart and he told me to untangle it. To untangle this heart. So I began to unknot this heart. And after that, I just knew... He told me, he, it's like a, it was like a download. I knew that I had just touched the heart of one of our young girls. And he told me, and I wrote it down. So I'm up, and all these students are at the bottom of the, 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 the crowd. They're down there, and I'm just typing away. And um, I just testify to what, to what God was doing. And I, I'm writing this experience that just happened to me. And, you know, he, he if, I mean, can I get my phone really quickly? Do you have it? <laughs> I'm just typing away. And, you know, it's scary sometimes to think, like, to step in faith, you have to, to trust that what you're seeing, what, what he's saying is true. And sometimes that's hard. I think about even Andrea, like, what is going on right now? Like, what is this? What am I experiencing? And in this moment, I just knew God was moving. God was somehow allowing me to be a part of what he was doing for his children, for his daughters. And I just want to share really quickly what I've written. And again, this was that same night while they were down there. I wrote, in the spirit, the Lord has allowed me to touch the heart of one of our young girls. Their heart has been knotted and tied up. And the Lord allowed me to untangle this knot in the spirit by his Holy Spirit. They will feel it and proclaim it and testify of it tonight. I write this to be a witness and testimony to the power of our Lord. And church, let me tell you, just in that moment after we got back from this, 
this service. We regrouped and we debriefed. And um, I was just in awe of what all these girls shared. But to, to know that God, <laughs> God moves. God moves and he's freeing, he's delivering. And he wants to use you to be a part of that. He wants to co-labor with you, not, not for your glory, for his glory, for you to be a shepherd, for you to be one that moves in the lives of others, that helps to set others free for his kingdom. <laughs> and I know that he'll continue what he's done for you, <laughs> Gigi. He'll allow you to do in others' lives. He'll allow you, you to do in others' lives by his spirit. It is not by us, not by flesh, but... um. God's been good. He's been good. And um, praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, girls. Uh, I just want to give a chance, if there's any other students who, who wanted to share just before I go forward. Going once, going twice. Okay. At this time, if I can call up the rest of FIRE student ministry leaders. <laughs> sorry, sorry, students, leaders, if you could come, if you could come at this moment. Are we in the building? Okay. Give it up for them, please. My lovely wife, Fidra, Michael, Kevin, Chelsea, Angela. Where Gabby at? Yeah, come on, Gabby. Josh, you come down here, too. <laughs> Are we missing? Where's Natan? Oh, we'll be praying. So guys, <laughs> this is Fire Students Ministries. <laughs> and um, you know, a lot of times I, I feel like people um, see me, you know, and they hear my name and they think, oh yeah, he's the one that, you know, does does youth and you know take takes care of the youth and prays for our kids, and it's not just me. It is not just me, and I could not do this alone. <laughs> I could not do it alone. And um, every single face that you see here plays such an intricate part into our students' spiritual life and their lives in general. And I just wanted to, to bring them up here to honor them today to honor them for their commitment, their sacrifice. Guys, if you only understood how much they have sacrificed, how much time they give, this is not the only ministry that they're in. And they've sacrificed, not for the sake of, oh, you know, we, we love Sean. I hope they love Sean. <laughs> I hope they love Sean. But not for the sake of we love Sean, but we love Christ. And we want to see the next generation go forward. So, guys, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you guys. I honor you guys. You guys have been such a joy to serve with. You guys continue to challenge me. You continue to push me. Um, I know I'm nowhere close to perfect. And you guys still deal with me. You, you, <laughs> you, um, you deal with me, you know. And one thing I know for sure is that whatever God plants and pushes in my heart, you guys, you're on board. You're on board. And it, it might not be willing. Like, it might not, you know, they, they might not always agree, but they, 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 they humbly decide to walk beside me and follow. So I thank you guys for that. I honor you guys for that. And um, church, if we can give them a hand. Yeah, you show them how much you love them. <laughs> um, praise God. No pressure. I did just want to open up the floor and give you guys a chance to testify of um, how God moved uh, in your life this year as you've sacrificed and, and committed yourself to another year of student ministry, how you've seen God move in these students' lives. Um, again, I won't, I won't hold a lot of time, a lot of space, but if there's anything at this moment. Oh, 
Oh, no question. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, church family. Um, definitely working with students teaches you a lot of patience, something I don't have. Um, but it's honestly a great opportunity. It is also just want to say thank you to the parents for trusting us, uh, not only us, but Sean, who has more patience than I. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, again, thank you, and thank you, team, for listening to my tomfoolery every meeting. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Again, just continue to keep us in prayer. Continue to keep us in prayer. Um, God's moving. He's moving in your students' lives. Um, he's moving in our lives. And um, more than anything, again, just your prayers, your prayers and your support will continue to move forward uh, his work in, in his, his harvest field. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, team. Thank you. All right, guys. You can stand up. <laughs> oh, I like how you guys are. You guys don't know what's coming next, do you? All right. Turn around and say hi to a new face. Go ahead and greet somebody. Say good morning. Bless them. <laughs> hey, Faith Online. Sean Smith here. Man, I am so happy to just welcome you. And while others are at service right now, just, you know, high-fiving, shaking hands, I wanted to give you a special welcome and let you know you're loved. You're appreciated, not just by me, not just by us, but especially by God. And man, there's so much going on here that you can get connected to. So we just want you to join the chats, click the links, all the good stuff you see, be a part. And man, again, we're welcoming you. We're so thankful that you've joined us. Would love to see you in person. Be blessed. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Faith Assembly of God. We are so glad that you are with us today. I just want to say if you are visiting with us for the first time, we are so glad that you have chosen to take this Sunday morning to check out Faith Assembly of God, and we are happy that you're with us. We would ask that you would fill out a Connect card for us. You can use the paper copy, which is in the pew right in front of you. If you prefer to do it online, you can use the QR code behind me. That QR code is also on that card right in front of you. Um, and that just allows us to get to know you a little bit better and know how we can serve you. Uh, remind you that the best way to give is online, but if you're with us in the sanctuary, you can always use the offering box at the back. Uh, I have a couple of things I want to highlight for you today, but if you want to see everything that is happening at Faith Assembly of God, you're going to go to Following Faith online to get all those details. All right, so Discovering Faith class. This is our foundations class. Learn about the foundations of the Christian faith. It began today, Sunday mornings. It will meet for the next 11 weeks at 9.30 in the Faith Center. If you didn't make it today, it's okay. You can catch up very quickly. So please plan to join us, 9.30. Um, our heart would be that every member of Faith Assembly of God will go through this class. Uh, so if you've not had the opportunity to do so, so yet, we would ask that you would just make an effort to be with us at 9.30 in the Faith Center. Also want to let you know that there is a new Connect group starting up next Sunday, one week from today, and that's going to be on prayer, an adventure with God. Uh, and that's going to meet downstairs in the fellowship hall, all right? So please plan to be there for that. On Saturday, we have home groups. Uh, if you have not yet participated in a home group and would like to, just fill out that Connect card or email, uh, email did I say Connect card? QR code, QR code, um, and, uh, and, or reach out to the church and we will connect you with a home group. We have a couple of them going on throughout the county. Next Sunday is Baptism Sunday. <laughs> One of my faves. So if you know that you are a follower of Jesus and have not yet been baptized in water, please fill out a Connect card or come and see me right after church, and we will have a discussion this week about whether or not Sunday is the right time for you to get baptized. Uh, and then last thing I think last thing I want to tell you is we have a marriage or engaged couples workshop coming up. The cost will be $65 a couple. It will be from 8.30 to 4. Um, and you do need to register. We need to know that you're coming. We will have child care that day. 
Yay, for those of you with young children, we will have child care, but we need to know how many children are coming. So you've got to register, tell us that your children are coming. If you don't have children coming, praise God, I am in that season as well, and I'm very happy to be in that season, I will tell you. Um, so anyway, we, we hope that we'll have a full house. Oh, I did have one more thing. So spring cleaning, two more things. Spring cleaning is coming. Whoo! So this church takes a lot of work to keep it together, all right? So we're asking that we would have a lot of hands come out. We're going to do 9 to 2 on May 11th. 9 to 2, we're going to do the things that don't get done every week, okay? Anybody have to do spring cleaning in your house, right? This is, we're going to do that here. And also on May 11th in the evening at 6.30, the young adults will be having a worship service right here in the sanctuary, all right? VBS, I will remind you that if you want to volunteer, you're going to fill out the QR code. Um, there is a QR code on a sign in the foyer in order to be a volunteer at VBS. All right. That's all I got for you. Super kids, come on down. That's three, four, and five-year-olds, kindergarten through fifth grade. If you have someone in super kids and you are with us for the very first time, we would ask that you would just register them out in the foyer before they head downstairs. Look at all of our little ones. All right, church, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for our children. We ask, God, that you would put a smile on their face as they go and learn about you. Give every teacher and helper all that they need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have fun. And I will also remind you that we do have a nursery. So if you have a toddler who is walking, um, you would actually head out that way and talk to a First Impressions team member in order to help you get to the nursery. Truth Seekers, you are staying in the sanctuary today to listen to your youth director preach. I don't know, walking up just now, I just had a like theme song. I felt like there was supposed to be music playing. I don't know, something going on while I, while I walked up. But uh, good morning, church. Good morning. I'm so happy to be with you guys. I'm so happy to be able to share um, the message today. I'm so happy to share it today. Uh, again, as always, I'm just super thankful. I'm super excited. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Pastor John just for the, uh, the humbleness, the, the honor for him to share this um, stage with me at the moment to, uh, to, to give this word. Uh, that's it's not usual, guys, if you don't know. And um, it's, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, first and foremost, happy Youth Sunday. <laughs> happy Youth Sunday. Happy Youth Sunday. Um, man, I'm, I'm privileged to serve, to love, to shepherd uh, this next generation for Christ through, through Fire Student Ministries. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't take that for granted. Um, students, I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, it worked. I love you guys. I'm so thankful um, to see what God's doing in your life, to be a part of what God's doing in your life. And I just want to say I know, I know for a fact that today the Lord has um, he's ordained this moment for his name, for his kingdom, to be glorified, uh, for captives to be set free today, <laughs> yes, for captives to be set free today, for the body of Christ to be further edified, for you guys to be encouraged today and equipped. I'm praying that today, amen, amen. Um, with that being said, oh, you weren't supposed to give it yet, it's okay though, <laughs> with, with that being said, I've received a word directed to all of us. Yes, it is Youth Sunday. Guys, I want you to be paying attention. But, um, but this, is a, this is a word for all of us. This is a word for all of us. And, um, you know, as always, uh, as, as, as I get the opportunity to, to share the message, the first thing that I, I begin to do is seek God's face for um, what he would have me share. 
And, you know, as, as I began to do that, what I realized was the first thing that was in my, my spirit from really the beginning of this year was, um, was a word that, that the Lord presented to us by our, by our lead shepherd, by our leader, um, which was an amazing series that I'd encourage you to revisit if you haven't on our YouTube page. It was Going Deeper. How many of you remember that? Going Deeper? Going Deeper captured is my heart. It's my heart. Um, it's my heart's desire for myself, for faith assembly, um, that in our spiritual life, in our walk, we would reach, we would serve, and we would function in the depths of the Lord's glory, of his power, of his presence, that we, that we have not yet seen, that we might not even yet comprehend. That, that let's starting there, that, as I seek, I knew, God, I, I want to go deeper. I want to go deeper. I want us as a body to go deeper. And that was just starting there. But I began to still search and dig within the scriptures, within my heart, and I began to seek. And the words that, that I just seemed to not be able to get away from in, I don't know about for you guys, but for me, as I begin to seek God's face, he doesn't only do it in the secret times. Like, he doesn't only do it in the times where I'm alone with him and I'm in his word. He begins to, like, just start popping things in my face where it's like you just hear the same words over and over. And for me, those words were transformation, transfiguration, and metamorphosis. I hope, <laughs> in my head, like when I hear this word, David, you did an amazing job last week. I think about how his, he just has an amazing speaking voice and then the accent. I wish that I could just naturally be like, and today's service, it is metamorphosis. <laughs> metamorphosis in order to transform. Like, and I just feel like automatically like, ooh, it's spirit filled. Like, <laughs> but that's what I decided to name today's, today's sermon, metamorphosis in order to transform. And you know, as I thought about these words, I got this picture of a butterfly breaking out of a cocoon. And I instantly, of course, thought about the process of metamorphosis that caterpillars must go through. Um, and at that moment, it, it's like it was just downloaded to me. Yes, that, that message of going deeper is in my heart um, for myself, for all of us. But I realized in that moment, as much as I'm desiring this, as much as I want this, you cannot go deeper, fly higher, go further, advance before you have chosen to go through transformation. It's not possible. You can go a certain distance, you'll get so far. But if you, if you desire to continue to go higher, to go further, to go deeper, things will have to change. Things will have to come off of you. You will have to put things on. Or you'll just have to be a whole new being in order for you to transform. And, um, you know, I wanted, I wanted us to just look at the word metamorphosis today. Could we bring that up? Metamorphosis. The process of transformation from an immature form to an adult form in two or more distinct stages, and also a change of the form or nature of a thing or person into a completely different one by natural or supernatural means. This is Oxford's dictionary's uh, definition. A change of the form of nature of a thing or person into a completely different one by natural or supernatural means. And I just knew that, again, there's this metamorphosis that I'm going through, that faith assembly is going through, that we, we need to go through. We have to go through. So, so as we get into this word, 
Um, I really want to dig into the thought of this amazing creature, the caterpillar. And I don't know, am I the only one that, I think it was like kindergarten or first grade, like the teacher brings in this whole tent and like it's a whole bunch of caterpillars and you get to watch throughout the week. The pro no, this didn't happen to anybody else. You get to watch throughout the, process, the week the process of the caterpillar. And yeah, so I'm gonna do that today. <laughs> uh, They're, they're not going to turn into butterflies today, but, <laughs> but um, right here I have some caterpillars. These are the hornworms. They're, they're called hornworms. So caterpillars do two things. They either turn into a butterfly or they turn into a moth. These ones aren't too active. They look like they're dead, but they, I promise they're alive. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but um, they, these, they, do, they, do two, they do two or they do two things. Either they become a butterfly are moth. These here, they become moths, the hornworm. Um, so you can look at that. I don't know if you can see that. Should I take it out? No, no? okay. <laughs> too much, too much. <laughs> but um, these are the hornworms, right? And, you know, they're amazing creatures. And to think of what God, like, formed for these creatures lets me know, like, he's a strategic and transforming God. He's a strategic and transforming God. And you know, it's through the process of metamorphosis that these guys here are transformed. And it's in that transformation that he's able to allow them to, after it's all finished, venture to new heights, realms and paths of this world that they would not be able to experience without that transformation. When they're a caterpillar, they're living that world. If they're out in the wild, they're living that, that life somewhere in the leaves. They're eating leaves, and they're, they're traveling and journeying on. And it's good. It's sweet. But there's so much more throughout their stages of process in life. They're in the leaves. God's ready to have them in the clouds. He's, a, he's, he's ready to have them soar. And, and, and that's us. That's us. It's the same thing that goes for us spiritually, church. Um, I want to take us to Ephesians chapter 4, 22 to 24. And it says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted, it's by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And guys, this scripture right here, it's not long, it's not long-winded, but this here brings me to my first point. In order to transform You'll have to be willing, first of all, to leave things behind. To leave things behind. You'll have to leave things behind, but in order to even transform here in your spiritual walk, you'll have to be willing to leave these things behind. And, and church, I'm convinced that a lot of times, that, that happens to be the, the struggle with us as believers. Um, you know, a lot of times we get so used to this life. Students, a lot of times you come to church, you've received, some of us have received Christ, right? And we think, oh, I'm saved. Like, okay, cool. I got it down. Like, I come to youth. I'll pray. Sometimes we'll go out. Uh, sometimes I'll be able to share with other, other students in my class. And boom, like, I'm Christian. You know, I'm I'm living the life that God's called for me to live. And yes, th that's a part of it. All of that is a part of it. But students, church, I want you to know he has so much more. He has so much more. Like, I think about the testimonies that, that these, uh, these students gave today, and I say, wow, like, if, 
this is, that's just a glimpse of what he's ready to do in their lives, what he's going to do in their lives. Like, if they have this testimony already, imagine what else is promised. Imagine what else is prepared for them. And that's all of us. That's all of us. And, you know, I look at it like this. You see this caterpillar? Are these caterpillars? As they're released into the wild, they begin to understand all of the things they need to do or that they can do as they're, they're out there. And what are some of those things, you might ask? All right, so first and foremost, a caterpillar, once it's in this stage, once it hatches from the egg, it becomes a caterpillar, the larva, and now it has to eat. It has to feed itself. So it has to find food, right? Boom. But they also have some pretty cool abilities. So they can stick to surfaces. They're pretty sticky. They stick to the, the surfaces vertically or horizontally. Um, some can even spin silk together for, for them to gather their food. Some actually release like special toxins so that they can preserve their food or like claim their food. Uh, and, and even some, like this guy that you see here, uh, and this, actually this guy here. You can't see it, but, <laughs> but there's like a little horn on his tail. And this is to, to fend off, you know, predators. It's supposed to like, oh, back up, I have a horn. It, they don't do anything. Like, it would, if, if you don't catch the bluff, they're gone, unfortunately. But, <laughs> but like, that's to try to fend off predators, you know? And then, just because God is so amazing, so amazing, I had to bring up this picture. So I don't know if you guys understand what you're looking at right now. This is a caterpillar. This is a caterpillar. And what this specific, they call this the viper caterpillar. If you Google it, it'll be the viper caterpillar. It's, it's actually upside down right now. So anytime that there's a predator, this viper caterpillar will turn itself upside down, twist its head so that it can look like a snake, and the predator, the thing that wants to eat it, will say, oh no, whoa, you're a big guy, and back off. Like, what? <laughs> God's amazing. Like, I, I looked at this and I was like, God is amazing. God is, am like, imagine... <laughs> The bot, like you just turn your back, just looked like something else to turn to turn predators away. Like you just turned around and there was a lion on your back. Like back up, like <laughs> like that's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. And yeah, God's cool, you know. Um, but my point, my point is, despite all the cool things that God has created for these caterpillars, He's created them to be and do way more. And it's the same thing for you. The same thing for you. You might be in this walk and you're thinking, wow, like I can, God's allowed me to see this. He's allowed me to do this. And there's more. There's more. Sometimes we're only in the stage of that larva, of this caterpillar. We've yet to go through the transformation. Yes, by Christ, as soon as we receive him, all things have passed. We become new. Right? But there's a term called sanctification. And this is turning you constantly, the process of you becoming new, being made purified, being made holy. And that's, in a sense, our spiritual metamorphosis. Right? We begin to have to transform. And in order to do that, you're going to have to leave that behind. As cool as this is, right, as cool as the, the, the things that we, we think about in our spiritual walk are, a lot of times we have to be willing to, to leave those thoughts, that thinking process, that comfortability, the habits. And these are good things. I'm talking about good spiritual things that we have consumed, we've learned, again, as that caterpillar has to feed for leaves, we have to feed ourselves and grow in Christ, right? And we do that. 
And as you do that, a lot of times we get comfortable. We think we know. Like, oh, this is, his, this is what his word says. This is what this means every time. And it, the thing is, we have to transform from that. We have to break our cycle, our mind, our thinking, our behavior, and put away the old things every day. Every day you have to renew yourself. You can't, you can't put God in a box. We're not able to put him in a box and say, well, I wake up today and this is how he's going to do it. This is how he's going to use me. This is how he's going to speak to me. And sometimes that's what we do. We're so used, like, we're so used to, as we're on this walk, we found the leaves, we found the word that God's spoken to us, and it's like, oh, he showed me it in a vision. He's going to show me it in a vision. He's going to show me it in a vision. He's going to show me it in a vision. Or, oh, he spoke to me through his, his word. He's going to speak through me his word, to, to me through his word. He's going to speak to me through his word. And it's not like that. It's not like that. God, God cannot be contained. He can't be contained. So we have to renew our minds. We have to be willing to put away what was yesterday and seek him afresh, right? And again, it's the old way of thinking, the old way of doing things, and making sure that we're renewed. And that renewal starts in the mind. Um, again, we see in, in Ephesians 4, it says to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. Where in the attitude of your mind. That is where it begins. You're not made new by just behaving differently or trying to move or walk differently or trying to put a smile on because you had this mindset of, or this, this, this position of life of sadness for the moment. Putting a smile on, yeah, you might, you might feel a little better faking a smile, but it doesn't feel better, it doesn't change until you renew your mind, until you renew it. And, and that's what he's calling us to. Also, I just want to bring just this, this verse, Romans 2, 12. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test what God's will is, his good and pleasing will. Like, again, when you renew your mind, you're giving yourself the opportunity to be transformed. When you renew your mind, when you refresh your mind in his word, in his word, in his spirit, now you're being able to allow yourself to transform. And, and again, that's whether you become a born-again follower of Christ today or a seasoned caterpillar <laughs> or Christian. Either one, either one, you're going to have to continuously renew your mind and put off the old things. And, you know, I don't, don't want to go on a rant. I hope I'm not boring you guys. But I really want to speak to the body. I want to speak to the body today, our, our seasoned saints. First of all, hold on, let me take a sip of water. because Or go. <laughs> Church, you do not know it all. You don't know it all. I don't know it all. I don't care how many times you've read through the Bible. I don't care how many times or how many souls you've won for Christ. Praise God. Praise God for that. But that doesn't sum up to you knowing it all. I don't care how many visions, spiritual encounters you've had. There's more. There's more. And especially as, as we dive into the realm of the spirit, again, we're, we're physical beings. Well, we're, we're spiritual beings in a physical place, right? But there's so much here that we don't understand. Imagine, think. And I, I hope you can understand that the, there is a spiritual realm. It's not made up. It's not make-believe. It's not imagination. After this physical place, there is a spiritual realm. And there's so much that we don't understand, even in our own world. How? How could we say we know? 
<laughs> and there's just so many mysteries. There's so many mysteries that have yet to be revealed. And, you know, I want to remind you that the Bible says, God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. So that means, if, to break that down, things that don't make any sense to us naturally, God decides he's going to use to glorify himself and show that, listen, this wisdom you have on your earth, it's nothing compared to me. I'm surpassed that. I'm surpassed your understanding. And God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 27. Again, that means that a king deserving of the throne, the, the king of all kings, would be born in a stable next to horses. A king that deserved to be glorified and be exalted would be made low. The king would come riding in on a stallion. No, he'd come riding in on a donkey. Like, it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't make sense. The, the, the son of God would be born of a virgin? Like, again, these things that don't make sense. If, when, when we look at it with carnal eyes, we say, how could that even be? You know, and we struggle with that. We wrestle with that. Like, how could this actually be? But God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. So because it looks weird to you, because it feels funny to you, you've never seen it before, does not mean it's not of his spirit. It does not mean that it's not of his Holy Spirit. We don't know it all. And, and sometimes this, this is... The biggest problem for us, this part right here. You see, how you think about yourself is actually what renews you. How you think about yourself in Christ is actually what renews you, right? You may have renewed your mind in what God says about you, right? You've ob 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 obtained the knowledge of what God says about you, right? And you know that. And you renewed... You've renewed your mind in the sense of, okay, I didn't know that before. Now I know God says this about me. But the problem becomes when you haven't renewed that thought of what God says about you in, about yourself. You still believe you're not worthy. You still believe he won't use you. You still believe he doesn't want to heal me. Unfortunately, these are things that we tell ourselves. Like, if you wanted to heal me, you would have did it already. Right? But you have to renew your mind. You have to renew your mind. And when you renew your mind about yourself in Christ, again, you open yourself to that transformation. So you may, you may have renewed your mind in God, but it starts with yourself. And... Just, to, just to, to speak to this, you know, a lot of times we'll say, well, I don't see it represented in Scripture, right? And there's, a, there's a, a good standard for that, right? There's a good place for that, for you to always seek God's word for what is happening. Again, when, when somebody's saying something, whether it's a, some, somebody's giving you a word, me speaking here right now, uh, somebody giving a, a word that they say is from God, you, you're to test that. You're to test that. It doesn't matter who that person is, how long they've been your, your spiritual leader, you test that, and you bring it to God, right? There's a place for that. And, and we know that the scripture has been given to us in order for us to do so. But to say, I haven't seen it represented anywhere in scripture, and to now cut it off as it must not be from God, doesn't make sense. Do we know how big the Bible would actually have to be for us to see all the things of God's Spirit represented in it? You know, 
I just want to share something um, that will hopefully help. You see, our God is a God of promises and principles. I hope that makes sense to you. Our God is a God of promises and principles. And the principles of his spirit, they don't ever change. They'll never change. And they'll always be represented in his word. Always. But the methods and the mysteries are more than millions. I don't know if you guys caught that alliteration. I tried to throw that in there from TJ. <laughs> the methods and mysteries are more than millions. They're more than millions. So in order to transform that first point, boom, you'll have to be willing to continuously leave behind the old things and be renewed. Renewed in your mind. You don't know it all. Take it away. Come fresh to the Lord every day. Come fresh to him every day. Second, in order to be transformed, you have to go through a process. You have to go through a process. Again, you see these caterpillars? There's a whole process. Again, we, we learned metamorphosis. <laughs> metamorphosis. That, that his creature has to go through metamorphosis in order to be transformed. So follow me as I connect quickly both this this amazing process of metamorphosis of caterpillars and our spiritual walks. You see, first, the caterpillar has to be born out of the egg. For us, we have to be reborn in Christ. We have to be reborn in Christ. As we receive him, again, we know all things are made new. We now receive his Holy Spirit and we're born, we're born new, we're made new in that part. But then as the caterpillar is now born out of the egg, like I said, it has to find food and it has to feed itself, it has to grow. As we become believers in Christ and we receive him into our heart, it's now our responsibility to feed ourselves. It's our responsibility to grow in the things of Christ. After this, the caterpillar forms a, a silk casing, right, for itself, which is called uh, a chrysalis. Or for, for uh, others, it's called a cocoon. The chrysalis is actually a hard casing. That's the shedding of the caterpillar. It makes a hard casing out of the shedding of itself out of the putting off of itself, it makes a shedding and a, a protection for it to go through a process of transformation. And for it to begin that process, you know, as it's in this chrysalis or this cocoon, the caterpillar's body and its muscles are actually being broken down and dissolved to nothing by a whole bunch of enzymes. It's nothing but but cells. So while they're in that cocoon, they're literally being broken and torn and, and pulled apart. And then new cells regenerate it to give all the new pieces needed for it to become a butterfly or a moth. That specific stage for us spiritually is what we tend to avoid. The breaking the breaking and the pulling and the ripping apart of our lives, of our thoughts, our comfortability, <laughs> our ways of doing things, even in Christ, our ways of doing things in him. That's the part that we decide, eh, maybe I'll stay a caterpillar. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe I don't need, like, maybe I don't need to build a cocoon and Whatever, whatever. Who knows what I'm going to look like as a, cat, as, a, as a butterfly? Like, what a scary thought. You know, I hope you're connecting the two while I say this. Like, who knows what I'm going to look like as I step into this transformation? Who knows what I'm going to look like as I go and do what he's called me to do? Amen. Like, that's the scary part, right? And the, the, the problem is, as, as you do that, in order to, to, to be willing to do that, you have to allow him to strip you, break you, pull you apart. 
not, not to, to make you suffer, right? Not to punish you, but to actually benefit you. But a lot of times, this part is so painful for us that the process actually feels like we're suffering, right? It feels like we're suffering. And because for us to even be stripped or be taken away from our thinking, our perception, our limitations that we put on ourselves. Let me remind you that. Like a lot of times the limitations that you think you have are because you put that on yourself. You put it on yourself. And, and because he's taking those things away, it becomes painful. It's like suffering. So furthermore, being stripped of, think about it, the people. As he transforms you, Peop, the, the, the people that you're around don't always get to stick around. Just being honest, like, the people that you're around don't always get to be with you in that transformation. The places that you enjoyed, that were comfortable, that were fun, that, that you liked, don't get to, you don't get to be in those places anymore. This caterpillar doesn't get to be on the ground in the leaves anymore. Once it becomes that butterfly, there's no space for it. There's no space for it. And that's the transformation. Again, we get comfortable in the methods that we're familiar with. But I want to read Peter 5.10. And it says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. And that's our cocoon process. As he's pulling you apart, as he's stripping you apart, and it feels like, God, why is it like this now? It never used to be like this. I never used to have to deal with this. Why are you taking this away from me? Why is it that I can't do this anymore? Why do I feel like this when I do this now? It's because he's pulling you apart. He's transforming you. And again, that feels like suffering. But after you've suffered for a little while, he'll restore you. He'll make you new. And that's that process. That's that cocoon process. But you see, in order for God to transform you, he has to break you down. He has to break you down. And you'll have to be given new pieces of life for you to function. And for us spiritually, that will continue. That will continue. Again, it's like I told you, sanctification. You'll continue, you'll never be made whole in, in Christ. There's always more. You'll continuously have to go through that process. You'll continuously have to go through being made into something else, right? And that process of being purified, made holy and new. Back to Ephesians 4, 24, it says, And to put on the new self, created to be like God, in true righteousness and holiness. Created to be like God, in true righteousness and holiness. Do you understand that you were actually created to be like your father? See, I think... Here is the part where we get, we get stuck a little bit. We get stuck a little bit and our minds stay, stay stuck on, well, no, I'm a human. I can't be like God. Like God is, yes, he is almighty. He is all-knowing. He is above all. But God has made us, he has given, first of all, if you're in Christ, you've received his spirit. <laughs> you've received his spirit. And because of that, you're like Christ. You're like God. You're like God. He, he's given you his spirit. And sometimes we think, and don't get me, I, I, I'm, I hope you don't get me misunderstood here. Sometimes we go to God for the things that he's already given us through his spirit to take care of. I'm not saying don't go to God, you do it in, within yourself. I'm saying do it within the spirit that he's already given you. If you, like, 
we know, we know God's will, right? Once you've renewed your mind, you know his good and pleasing will. It is God's will for you to be healed. It's God's will for it. So if you will renew your mind and walk in it, you'll receive it. Like, we know, again, God's promises are true, are true, Amen. right? And, and don't, don't get me wrong. I don't want you to think, like, again, sometimes God's will will surpass what we wanted, right? So we won't always get what we want. We, we won't always get what we thought was going to happen. But he's given you the authority to walk in that. You don't, have to, you don't have to come to God, you know, if it's your will, if you want to. If, I, if he wants to, walk, how about you walk in the authority that he's, he's promised that this is what he wants to do, right? So you speak that and you declare that. You speak it and you declare it. God, I declare that I will see transformation, that I will see healing in this situation, that I will see restoration in this situation. And then... If he decides to change that, that's on him. You follow him anyway. Amen. You'll align with his spirit anyway. Amen. So, so, so sometimes we get stuck in that, right? But we've been created to be like God by his spirit. Thank you, Lord. But it's a process. It's a process. If you want to be transformed, you'll have to be willing to go through the process. And my last point. In order to be transformed, you'll have to be willing to be something you never were. If I'm being honest with you, this part scares me. <laughs> this part scares me. You'll have to be willing to be something you never were. As I've gone through this process of just God calling me to ministry, God uh, just developing or allowing me to grow into the gifts that he's given me. I'm realizing I have to be someone that I never was. And not in a way where I'm being inauthentic, I'm being fake, I'm being someone I'm not, but I'm transforming. I'm transforming, and the things that made sense to me no longer make sense. The things that I wanted to be, the things that I wanted to do, he's stripping away from me. And it's scary. It's scary, right? But if you want to transform and be what God had, all that God has for you, you have to be willing to be something you never were. You have to. If I can have the worship team come at this moment. Um, you see, once this caterpillar transforms into that butterfly or moth, that's it. That's it. You know, studies actually have shown that a butterfly can actually still remember its life stages as a caterpillar once it's come out of that metamorphosis. So they're a whole butterfly, and they still remember the times where they were on the ground searching for leaves, trying to turn into the viper to get away from the bird. They remember all of those things. But now they've been made new. And those things that they used to do, that butterfly can't do anymore. That butterfly can't turn around and turn into a viper anymore. It has beautiful colored wings now. It can't eat and chew on leaves anymore. It has to go and seek nectar. Same thing with us. The ways that you used to feed yourself spiritually, you can't feed yourself that way anymore. You have to feed yourself in a new way. And, and sometimes it's confusing, and it's like, well, well Lord, why, why do I have to do it this way? Why are you making me do this now? But it's because he's transforming you. And you know, you have to face the fact the caterpillar, as it becomes a butterfly, has to face the fact that it has to do something it's never done before. It has to fly. It has to fly. And I think about, it's weird, but I, th I think about 
if I was a caterpillar, how scary that thought would be. I'm used to crawling. I've gone through the transformation. You pulled away a whole bunch of things like I was melted to nothing. And I'm remembering the process. And when I'm finally out of that transformation, I have these new things at the side of me. And I'm supposed to fly? Like how scary that would be. All I've known was how to crawl. And now you're telling me I, I have to control myself in the air with the wind and all these other creatures in the air. It becomes scary. And for us, it's the same thing. We're so used to how God's moved in our lives as we've come to him that we haven't chosen to move into the transformation, the metamorphosis. And we don't know what it looks like on the other side of that transformation. So we delay it or we stay away from it. We know that God wants to do something. He's doing something. He wants to make me new. He wants to change this situation. But changing this situation also causes me losing this, me losing this person, me being away from this place. So I don't know if I want it. And that's us sometimes, right? But if you want to be transformed into all that God has for you, you're going to have to do the things you've never done. Yes, you might be willing to put behind the old things, right? And forget about the things that you used to do. But are you actually willing to do the new things? Are you ready to no longer crawl like the others that might even still be around you? And don't get me wrong, I'm not pushing down the process that we all have to go through. But your crawling, or their crawling, might look a lot different while he's transforming you. While they're crawling and you're in the cocoon, it doesn't look the same. As they're in the cocoon and you're a butterfly, it doesn't look the same. That butterfly has to do something it's never done. And are you ready to to be in those new ways? Is the question. Are you ready to to feed yourself in new ways? Are you ready to be isolated? from others in a way that you've never been before. It becomes awkward. It becomes a challenge. You know that God's doing a, a new thing in you. You know he's transforming you. But the, there's others around you and they're questioning and they're wondering well, why doesn't he do this anymore? Why doesn't she say this anymore? Why doesn't he go here anymore? Why, why, why does she do that during worship now? Why does it seem like he's always fasting? Why, why is she speaking in this language that no one understands. And it's like all the time. <laughs> like as he begins to transform you by his spirit, there'll be a lot of things that you'll have to take on in order to function and sustain who he's making you 
to be in him. I hope that makes sense. And it's going to be scary. Could be lonely for a while. But if you desire to walk in the fullness of what God has for you, what he has for your life, and your relationship with him, you'll have to go through your metamorphosis. You know, these caterpillars, the last thing, if they stop feeding themselves, what actually happens to them is they dehydrate, they dry up, and they die. They dry up and they die. If you stop feeding yourself spiritually, I can guarantee, I can guarantee you, eventually, spiritually, you'll dry up and be close to death, if not dead, spiritually. Also, if these caterpillars don't make that cocoon or that chrysalis, or chrysalis, however you want to say it, <laughs> if they don't make that, they die. They don't get to stay caterpillars. If something stops them from making the process of that, that, that cocoon, if something holds them back from making that cocoon, they don't get to just say, okay, well, I'm just not going to choose to be a butterfly. No, they, they die. And that's the question, unfortunately. Like, am I willing to, to not transform into what God has me to be and spiritually die because of fear, because of uncomfortability? Metamorphosis in order to transform. We must transform, church. We must transform. I think about our students. And, um, you know, I've, I've been um, the youth leader since 2020. Um, but I've been around for, for quite, quite a long time. And um, I've seen students that came in like this and turned into this. And that's a physical change, right? But I've seen students also that have come in broken, torn, lost. And I've seen them become men and women of God that God has transformed, that he's used to minister that he's gifted. It's a beautiful process, right? But I, it's a tough process. And I, I've seen that part too. As our students go through life and just this spiritual walk, for, for you guys, it's not a, it's, again, it's not an age thing. There'll be things that you'll have to put to the side. There'll be things that you'll have to let go, people you'll have to let go if you're willing to be what God's desiring for you to be, if you're willing to transform. And it's the same for all of us. It doesn't stop. Church, we have to transform. So in this time, I, I just want to invite God's spirit I know he's already in this place. But I want the Holy Spirit to just begin to, to pick at the pieces that have been stopping us from the transformation. The damage, the hurt, the fears that have been keeping us from saying, yes, Lord, I want to transform. this time if we could just if we can stand 
and begin to usher God's presence and meditate and seek his face. And I know, I know that God's going to show. He's going to show his face. He's going to show his hand in our lives if we'd surrender. So just in this moment, thank you, Lord. Here I am down on my knees again surrendering all surrendering Desperate for you, desperate for you. Lord, have your way. Lord. 
Lord, have your way in me. Like a rushing wind, Jesus, breathe within. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Like a mighty song, stir within my soul. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know. to call out but for us to submit for us to submit so there's a person Your life has been troublesome, to say the least. You've continuously, it seems like, you've continuously gone through trial after trial from a, from a little girl. You've continuously seen struggles in your life. You've seen a lot. And then you came to this place in your adulthood where you felt like, the best I can explain is like a, a gasp of air for a second. Like, <sighs> it was like, thank God allowed things into your life where it was like, I can breathe for a second. <gasps> like that's what I'm feeling, like a, it was a, a gasp of air for a second. And it's good. The air was good. But it's like the troubles. Could, it's like, why is there more? Why is there more? Let me let you know his hand is on your life. He is calling you. He is calling you. If you, if you would submit to him and say yes in every area, he is transforming you. He has claimed you. The person who I'm speaking, you've received this. He is, he is claimed, he has claimed you. And the things that you've had to face, 
We're not all his hand. But he's using it. He's using it to glorify his name through you. There's two people I'm talking to right now. There might be more, but I know that I'm talking to two people. Another, there's another person who you, you, this message is for you. This message is for you. You have been in a place of transformation. (laughs) God has been flipping your world upside down. In good ways, but also in challenging ways. He's been flipping it upside down. And now you're on board. You see God's hand. You see God's hand and you're on board with what he wants to do. But you, but you have a bunch of questions and a bunch of fears and you're worried. If you have that in your heart right now, would you come? Would you specifically come? I know I'm asking a brave thing. But you're in this new place of transformation. continue to worship.
At this time, uh, again, if you have children that you have to uh, collect, you can go through these doors. Uh, I just want to bless you, but I want you to know, if you desire more, God has more right now. That's no pressure. If you have to leave, be blessed and go. If you desire more, God is ready right now. If you have a tug on your heart, don't leave yet. But if you have to go, go. But let me bless you. I bless you this day that you would receive all that the Lord has for you. That you would go in bravery and courage, stepping into the transformation prepared for your life, that you would not be one of fear, of doubt, or lack of faith in what he has purposed for your life. I pray right now a special grace over you, that you would go in abundance, that you would go in prosperity of all the things of his spirit, that you might be rich for his kingdom, not material, but spiritually rich for his kingdom and used for the glory of his name. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Be blessed. Hey, Faith Online, we want to thank you once again for joining us today. Now, if you made a decision to follow Jesus, please be sure to click the Next Steps link below. If you're having trouble getting to us in person because of life circumstances and would welcome a visit from our care team, please let us know by clicking the Connect link below. Finally, if God's been using this ministry as a blessing in your life, uh, we would love for you to do three things. Number one, 
subscribe to this channel. Number two, share this link with others. And finally, number three, support the work of this church by praying for us and giving financially as God would lead you. Well, until next time, remember, living for Jesus won't always be easy, but it will always be worth it.